what would a Biden administration do in January and February that a Trump administration wouldn't do? Would you impose new lockdowns for businesses and schools and hotspots? A federal mandate to wear masks? You have two minutes to respond without interruption. Thank you, Susan. Well, the American people have witnessed what is the greatest failure of any presidential administration in the history of our country. And here are the facts. 210,000 dead people in our country in just the last several months. Over 7 million people who have contracted this disease. One in five businesses closed. We're looking at frontline workers who have been treated like sacrificial workers. We are looking at over 30 million people who in the last several months had to file for unemployment. And here's the thing. On January 28th, the vice president and the president were informed about the nature of this pandemic. They were informed that it's lethal in consequence, that it is airborne, that it will affect young people, and that it would be contracted because it is airborne. And they knew what was happening, and they didn't tell you. Can you imagine if you knew on January 28th, as opposed to March 13th, what they knew, what you might have done to prepare? They knew, and they covered it up. The president said it was a hoax. They minimized the seriousness of it. The president said, you're on one side of his ledger. If you wear a mask, you're on the other side of his ledger if you don't. And in spite of all of that, today they still don't have a plan. They still don't have a plan. Well, Joe Biden does. And our plan is about what we need to do around a national strategy for contact tracing, for testing, for administration of the vaccine, and making sure that it will be free for all. That is the plan that Joe Biden has and that I have, knowing that we have to get a hold of what has been going on, and we need to save our country. And Joe Biden is the best leader to do that. And frankly, this administration has forfeited Thank you, their right Harris. to reelection based Th on this. Thank you, Senator Harris. Vice President Pence, more than 210,000 Americans have died of COVID-19 since February. The U.S. death toll as a percentage of our population is higher than that of almost every other wealthy nation on Earth. For instance, our death rate is two and a half times that of Canada next door. You head the administration's coronavirus task force. Why is the U.S. death toll as a percentage of our population higher than that of almost every other wealthy country? And you have two minutes to respond without interruption. Susan, thank you. And I want to thank the commission and the University of Utah for hosting this event. And uh, Senator Harris, it's a privilege to be on the stage with you. you know, our nation has gone through a very challenging time this year. But I want the American people to know that from the very first day, President Donald Trump has put the health of America first. Before, there were more than five cases in the United States, all people who had returned from China. President Donald Trump did what no other American president had ever done. And that was he suspended all travel from China, the second largest economy in the world. Now, Senator Joe Biden, Biden opposed that decision. He said it was xenophobic and hysterical. But I can tell you, having led the White House Coronavirus Task Force, that that decision alone by President Trump bought us invaluable time to stand up the greatest national mobilization since World War II. And I believe it saved hundreds of thousands of American lives. Because with that time, we were able to reinvent testing. More than 115 million tests have been done to date. We were able to see to the delivery of billions of supplies so our doctors and nurses had the resources and support they needed. And we began, really, before the month of February was art, to develop a vaccine and to develop medicines and therapeutics that had been saving lives all along the way. And under President Trump's leadership, Operation Warp Speed, we believe, will have literally tens of millions of doses of a vaccine before the end of this year. The reality is, when you look at the Biden plan, it reads an awful lot, like what President Trump and I and our task force have been doing every step of the way. And quite frankly, when I look at their plan that talks about advancing testing, creating new PPE, developing a vaccine, um, it looks a little bit like plagiarism, which is something Joe Biden knows a little bit about. And I think the American people know that 
This is a president who has put the Thank health of president. America first, and the American people, I believe with my heart, can be Thank proud of the sacrifices Pence. they have made. It's saved Thank countless you, American Pence. lives. Senator Harris, would oh, you like to respond? Absolutely. I, whatever the vice president is claiming the administration has done, clearly it hasn't worked. When you're looking at over 210,000 dead bodies in our country, American lives that have been lost, families that are grieving that loss. And you know, the vice president is the head of the task force and knew on January 28th how serious this was. And then thanks to Bob Woodward, we learned that they knew about it. And then when that was exposed, the vice president said, when asked, well, why didn't y'all tell anybody? He said, because the president wanted people to remain calm. Well, let's get so I, but, no, but Susan, I, this is important. Susan, I, and I, I, I want to add, but if, Mr. Vice President, I'm speaking. I have to I'm speaking. Yeah, you so can have 15 I, I more wanna, seconds, and then we'll give the vice president a chance to So respond. I want to ask the American people, how calm were you when you were panicked about where you're going to get your next roll of toilet paper? How calm were you when your kids were sent home from school and you didn't know when they could go back? How calm Thank were you, you when you, your Senator children Harris. couldn't see your parents because you were afraid they could kill them? Let's give Vice President Pence a chance to respond. Vice well, President Pence, you have one minute to respond. You know, there's not a day gone by that I haven't thought of every American family that's lost a loved one. And I want all of you to know that you'll always be in our hearts and in our prayers. But when you say what the American people have done over these last eight months hasn't worked, that's a great disservice to the sacrifices the American people have made. I'm referring the reality, to the if, I may, if I may finish, Senator, the reality is, Dr. Fauci said, everything that he told the president in the Oval Office, the president told the American people. Now, President Trump, I will tell you, has boundless confidence in the American people, and he always spoke with confidence that we'd get through this together. But when you say it hasn't worked, when Dr. Fauci and Dr. Birx and our medical experts came to us in the second week of March, they said if the president didn't take the unprecedented step of shutting down roughly half of the American economy, that we could lose 2.2 million Americans. Now, that's the reality. Thank you. They also Thank said to us if we did everything right, Susan, we could still lose more than 200,000 Americans. Vice President now, one Pence. life lost is too Thank many, you. Susan. But the American people, I believe, deserve credit for the sacrifices that they have made, putting the health of their family and their neighbors first, our doctors, our nurses, our first Thank responders. Thank you, Vice President Pence. And I'm going to speak up on behalf of what the American people have done. Vice President Pence, you were in the front row in a Rose Garden event 11 days ago at what seems to have been a super spreader event for senior administration and congressional officials. No social distancing, few masks, and now a cluster of coronavirus cases among those who were there. How can you expect Americans to follow the administration's safety guidelines to protect themselves from COVID when you at the White House have not been doing so? Well, the American people have demonstrated over the last eight months that when given the facts, they're willing to put the health of their families and their neighbors and people they don't even know first. And President Trump and I have great confidence in, in the American people and, and their ability to take that information and put it into practice. In the height of the epidemic, when we were losing a heartbreaking number of 2,500 Americans a day, we surged resources to New Jersey and New York and New Orleans and Detroit. We told the American people what needed to be done, and the American people made the sacrifices. When the outbreak in the Sun Belt happened this summer, again, Americans stepped forward. But the reality is the work of the President of the United States goes on. A vacancy on the Supreme Court of the United States uh, has come upon us, and the president introduced Judge Amy Coney yes. Barrett. Thank you. Thank you, Vice but President. At, at yes. that, if I may say, that Rose Garden event, there's been a great deal of speculation about it. My wife Karen and I were there and honored to be there. Many of the people who were at that event, Susan, actually were tested yes. for coronavirus, and it was an outdoor event, which yeah. all of our scientists regularly and routinely advise. The difference here is President Trump and I trust the American people to make choices in the best interest of their health. Uh, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris consistently talk about mandates, and not, not just mandates with the coronavirus, but a government takeover of health care, Thank you. Thank the you, Green Vice New President Deal, Pence. all government control. We're about freedom and respecting the freedom of the American people. Let's talk about respecting the American people. You respect the American people when you tell them the truth. 
You respect the American people when you have the courage Which we've to be a leader done. speaking of those things that you may not want people to hear, but they need to hear so they can protect themselves. But this administration stood on information that if you had as a parent, if you had as a worker knowing you didn't have enough money saved up, and now you're standing in a food line because of the ineptitude of an administration that was unwilling to speak the truth to the American people. So let's talk about caring about the American people. The American people have had to sacrifice far too much because of the incompetence of this administration. It is asking too much of the people. Susan, we talked no, about that. It is asking too much of the people Look, that they would not be equipped with the information they need to help themselves to protect Susan, their parents the and their no, children. Sorry. Uh, Kamala Harris, Senator Harris, I mean, I'm sorry. It's I'm fine, I'm Kamala. No, no, you're Senator <laughs> Harris to me. Um, for life to get back to normal, Dr. Anthony Fauci and other experts say that most of the people who can be vaccinated need to be vaccinated. But half of Americans now say they wouldn't take a vaccine if it was released now. If the Trump administration approves a vaccine before or after the election, should Americans take it and would you take it? If the public health professionals, if Dr. Fauci, if the doctors tell us that we should take it, I'll be the first in line to take it. Absolutely. But if Donald Trump tells us I should that we should take it, I'm not taking it. Vice President Pence, there have been a lot of repercussions from this pandemic. In recent days, the president's diagnosis of COVID-19 has underscored the importance of the job that you hold and that you are seeking. That's our second topic tonight. It's the role of the vice president. One of you will make history on January 20th. You will be the vice president to the oldest president the United States has ever had. Donald Trump will be 74 years old on Inauguration Day. Joe Biden will be 78 years old. That already has raised concerns among some voters, concerns that have been sharpened by President Trump's hospitalization in recent days. Vice President Pence, have you had a conversation or reached an agreement with President Trump about safeguards or procedures when it comes to the issue of presidential disability? And if not, do you think you should? You have two minutes without interruption. Well, Susan, uh, thank you. Although I would like to go back. I, I to, think we need uh, to move on well, to the issue you, of Well, thank you, but I would like to go back because the reality is that we're going to have a vaccine, Senator, in record time, in unheard of time, in less than a year. We have five companies in phase three clinical trials. And we're right now producing tens of millions of doses. So the fact that you continue to undermine public confidence in a vaccine, exactly. if the vaccine emerges during the Trump administration, I think is, is unconscionable. And Senator, I, I just ask you, stop playing politics with people's lives. The reality is that we will have a vaccine, we believe, before the end of this year. And it will have the capacity to save countless American lives and, and your continuous undermining uh, of confidence in a vaccine is just, it, it's just unacceptable. And let me also say, you know, the reality is when you talk about, about failure in this administration, we actually do know what failure looks like in a pandemic. It was 2009, the swine flu arrived in the United States. Thankfully, it was, ended up not being as lethal as the coronavirus. But before the end of the year, when Joe Biden was vice president of the United States, not seven and a half million people contracted the swine flu, 60 million Americans contracted the swine flu. If the swine flu had been as lethal as the coronavirus in 2009, when Joe Biden was vice president, we would have lost two million American lives. His own chief of staff, Ron Klain, would say last year that it was pure luck that they did, quote, everything possible wrong. And, and we learned from that. They left the strategic national stockpile empty. They left uh, an empty and hollow plan, but we Thank still learned from Pence. it. And I, I think Vice the American Pence, people, I want to say again, can be proud Vice President Pence, I'm sorry, of what we have up. done. And Senator, please Thank you, stop President undermining Pence. confidence in a vaccine. Senator Harris, let me ask you the same question that I asked sure. Vice President Pence, which is, have you had a conversation or reached an agreement with Vice President Biden about safeguards or procedures when it comes to the issue of presidential disability? And if not, and if you win the election next month, do you think you should? You have two minutes uninterrupted. 
So let me tell you, first of all, um, the day I got the call from, from Joe Biden, it was actually a Zoom call, um, asking me to serve with him on this ticket was probably one of the most memorable, memorable days of my life. Um, I, you know, I thought about my mother, who came to the United States at the age of 19, um, gave birth to me at the age of 25 at Kaiser Hospital in Oakland, California. And um, the thought that I'd be sitting here right now, um, I know would make her proud. And she must be looking down on this. Um, you know, Joe and I were raised in a very similar way. We were raised with values that are about hard work, about the value and the dignity of public service, and about the importance of fighting for the dignity of all people. And I think Joe asked me to serve with him because, you know, I have a career that included being elected the first woman district attorney of San Francisco, where I created models of innovation for, for law enforcement in terms of reform of the criminal justice system. I was elected um, the first uh, woman of color and black woman to be elected attorney general of the state of California, where I ran the second largest department of justice in the United States. 